Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney Magic. Whether they be singers, actors, Imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de doo day. You've done the thing. All you've done up to now is break his heart. I'm excited to welcome this week's Tierra Talk Show guest, actor Gary Morgan, to the show. Welcome, Gary. Hi, Tammy. Thank you. I know it's been a year in the making, but we finally get to sit down and talk, so I'm so glad we can. (laughs) And it's been almost over 40 years since Pete's Dragon. Isn't that crazy? Amazing. I know. It doesn't seem like it's gone that quickly, does it, since the audition Mm. process? Can you talk a little bit about the initial audition process for your role as Grover? I got hired as a dancer, as what they call a skeleton dancer. That means they hire like or half a dozen dancers and the choreographer works out the choreography on the dancers. And then you teach it to whoever is going to do it, like all the choreography for Helen Reddy, for the kids, for Doc Terman, everybody. And you work it out. Now, at this point, I had been doing a lot of acting work. And this job came up, and I was kind of bummed. I'm going to my wife, you know, I'm doing all this acting, and now I'm taking a job as a chorus dancer. Now, it paid, you know, very nice, and it was going to be a nice long job. But um, I went to the casting director, because we were, you know, we were on the movie months before it started, like two months before the movie even started, to work out the choreography. And I said to the casting director, there's two brothers. Could I audition for one of them? And he said, no, Gary, you're wrong. They, they want two big guys, like oxen of men. So I went, all right, well, whatever. So they worked out the choreography on us for the Gogans. Now, we auditioned the actors that were coming in. When I say audition, we did the dance number in front, like, you know, me and uh, somebody else. So I was auditioning all these big guys that were coming in, and they were fairly well-known actors, all the, you know, the big guys. Anyway, and I would do it in front. Now, by this point, I already had a beard because I'd let my beard grow because we were all playing townspeople and the fishermen and all the, the dancers were also going to play these little ancillary, you know, background kind of things and be in the dance numbers. So after auditioning about, oh, I don't know, eight or ten guys, the director said, why don't we just use Gary for the role? I mean, he does the choreography so good, and we won't have to double him. He could do all his own stunts. So they brought me into a room and had me read for the part. And it was like two seconds. He said, just read these couple lines. And uh, the director went, perfect, you're playing the role. Fired as a skeleton dancer, hired as the co-starring role. And instead of doing two oxen of men, they decided to do it like Mutt and Jeff. He said, it'll be funnier anyway, a little guy and a big guy. The big guy could beat up the little guy. And I got it kind of a backdoor weird way. It was one of those serendipity things, you know, and it was like, thank you, God. I was so bummed that, uh, that I was back to being a chorus boy, and I got elevated to a co-star. I come from a circus background. My parents were acrobats, and I was on the road when I was a baby. So I knew how to do all that stuff. So it was, it was uh, and I even designed, a, a, got a bunch of the stunts, uh, like some of it, like, and they also said, if you see one person in the family do, you know, you could see their face, you assume that the other people, that it's them too. Like the big explosion when we're, uh, the bill of sale number, at the end of it, the dragon, you know, hits us and the boat explodes and we all go flying through the air. Well, you totally see my face flying through the air, but you didn't see the other cast members, because they all had stunt doubles. So they assume if you see one of them that the other ones are doing it too. It turned out Jeff Conaway played my brother. Now Jeff and I did our first Broadway show together, 
and shared a dressing room. So I know Jeff Conaway since we're nine together, and I was a little older, so I kind of lorded it over him because I was probably, I don't know, six months older than Jeff, and you know how kids are when that happens. But Jeff was probably his adult height when he was nine. You know, he was this big, tall, lanky kid, and, uh, and we were friends. You know, we would bump into each other throughout the years. So when we both got the part together, it was, it was really fun. And Charles Tyner was actually in the movie Harold and Maud. He played the dad. And my wife was in Harold and Maud, so she knew Charles Tyner. And what can I say about Shelley Winters? The only thing I'll tell you is any story you've ever heard about Shelley Winters, no matter how outrageous, it's probably true. She was, <laughs> I'm going to tell you a, a story about Shelley, that Shelley was s- such a pain in the neck and such a prima donna during that movie that when we were doing the, the mud scene was one of the first things that we did. And she just walked off the set. She was such like a prima donna. She didn't like being in the mud. She thought that her dressing room wasn't enough. She didn't like that she had to walk all the way from the, the, the front door of the stage all the way onto the stage. And she walked off the set because they had the air conditioner on. In two minutes, all the brass was there, the head of the studio, the big producers, everything. And they're saying things like, Martha Ray, Kay Ballard. They fired Shelley Winters. The director brought her into his trailer and said, Shelley, darling, he was from Australia. Shelley, darling, uh, you're absolutely marvelous in this movie, and we love what we're getting, but you're such a dreadful pain in the neck that we have to fire you, because if you pull this kind of crap later on, we won't be able to reshoot it. And as it is now, we could still reshoot everything that we've done. And she said... I'll be good, I promise. He says, we can't trust you. And she begged and pleaded, and they kept her. But there was a moment when it was not going to be Shelley Winters because she was, she was being, playing the star, and Disney was not having it. I read somewhere that she actually tore a foot ligament during the production, too. Were you there for that? I was, and she was all... I don't think she really tore a foot ligament. She said, oh, my leg. She said, I need a wheelchair. So now she's got a wheelchair so she didn't have to walk from the door to the set. And then she had oxygen. But I adored her. We (laughs) stayed friends for years after the movie. I used to go to her her house. I was like a surrogate son to her. I just found it, her bad behavior, humorous. I thought, I was like, I can't believe somebody's acting this, you know, this badly and getting away with it and the uh, people say stop laughing at her you're encouraging her see it looked like you guys had a lot of fun doing those scenes you, you did had, seem like a family we had so much fun doing that movie <laughs> that i can't begin to tell you and shelly it was like kind of bossing around the guy who played her husband and you know he, he was not having that either it was such family at disney at that time that uh it, it was just great fun and Sean and I were talking about John Marshall. We had him a couple of weeks ago for an interview. But we were talking about there There are a lot of uh, upsetting subjects brought up in this film. You know, there's child abuse, alcoholism, and then saying goodbye to a loved one forever. You guys are considered the villains of the film and must not be the easiest thing to do on set and terrorizing Pete. Well, you know, we really didn't talk about that. None of those subjects that I was aware of were really brought up about, because it was, it was child, it was, you know, we were beating up the kid, but I got to tell you, I adored Sean. Sean was such a great little kid. He was, you know, wide-eyed, and, you know, he really, like, would get into, like, you know, believing the dragon, because we were all playing to cutouts of the dragon. They put him in later. They had a big cutout of it just so that they got the framing right. It was a time that I used to wear suspenders every day. I had all these different colored suspenders. And I remember uh, one time I, I bought Sean a whole set of colored suspenders like me. And I would teach him crazy tap dancing stuff. And Sean's mom was a, just a dear. And she was not your typical stage mother. You know, she was, she was great, Sharon. And she's since passed. It was, it was just great fun. Sean was a great little kid, too. You know, he was not pretentious. He was not your, your typical actor kid. Because they auditioned a lot of high-profile kids, actors, you know, um, before Sean. And I was around for all those kids' auditions because we would, like, interact with the kids, you know. Uh, 
and you know, and then we, when I was a skeleton dad, so we were training the kids, you know, uh, how to do dance steps and all that. And Sean was a fast study. I was surprised that he didn't continue in the business because um, he was so good. He was just a, a real natural talent. It's really sad because we recently lost Mickey Rooney. Do you have any oh, yeah. special stories about working alongside him? Mickey Rooney had a very high energy, and he would want to tell you stories. And if there's four people sitting around, he would be up there on his feet telling stories really animated. And if you weren't paying attention, he would like, you know, hey, 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 he would like catch you and go, and he'd point to his face, right here, right here. <laughs> you know, he, he, he demanded attention. And Shelly would go, Mickey, you're exhausting. I can't take it anymore. He would, he would, like, confide in you, like, personal things, too. And I got great pictures with Mickey and, uh, and Red Buttons. Red Buttons was another one. The two of them, oh, my God, that, that scene when they go down to the cave, you know, uh, to see the dragon, when they were both drunk. That was such a funny day, the two of them just, you know, playing drunk off each other. I'm telling you. There was teeth marks all over the scenery. They were chewing it so much. But the person that I <laughs> adored was Jim Dale. Jim Dale is delicious. He did all that those comedies in England and these great stage things. And he would tell you stories about just different little ways to rig comedy or to rig pratfalls. I was still a skeleton dancer at the time, and they rolled in these barrels, and they had them with an electric chain that made the barrels go. So I said to Anna White, we were just learning how to walk on the barrels, but I was a, a, a circus acrobat, so I could walk on a rolling ball and stilts and all that. And I was running on the barrel, and I said to uh, the choreographer, Anna White, says, hey, Anna, what if we tap dance on the barrel? She says, what, are you kidding? You're lucky you could walk on it. I said, watch this. And I did these couple tap steps. And she said, that's great. You think we could teach it to Helen? And I said, well, let's see. So we got Helen in. And Helen learned how to do it and learned how to do these little tap steps. But it was, the beer was supposed to come out, so they couldn't use the electric motor. So then they had to get with an air-compressed motor because the, the beer would short out the electric motor. So they made an air-compression thing, and it wasn't as controllable as the electric motor. So it was another learning curve for that. So Helen Reddy learned how to do the barrel scene. Go to shoot it. And the Corey, Anna White said to the director, um, what's the frame line? He goes, don't worry about it. It's good. She said, well, let me look through the camera. And the old school director, he says, uh, go sit over here. You choreograph and let me direct. So Anna was not used to that kind of treatment. She won an Oscar for Oliver, and uh, she was a major contributor to Peach Dragon. You know, all the choreography and just a lot of the staging. So they shot it. And we went to dailies. This is before um, video playback. You know, so you didn't see what you shot until a day or two days later. She sees what Helen Reddy did, and they never got one shot of Helen head to toe. They got shots of her face. They got shots of her feet. They never got a shot of all of her on the barrel. And she made them put the, redress the set Bring the dancers that were in back for that one shot where you actually see Helen doing the dance on the barrel. The interesting thing was they recently announced that there was going to be a remake of Pete's Dragon, and now there's, there's a new trailer that just came out, and there's photos of the dragon. What were your initial first thoughts when you heard about this? Well, the guy that lives in my guest house is a director, and his, he said to me, my buddy's going to direct a remake of Pete's Dragon. So the director was up at my house for a party one time of Pete's Dragon. And I was going, he said, it's nothing at all like the first. The only thing is the name. It's not a musical. It's not the characters. There's nothing about the remake that has anything to do with the old one except the title. And I was going, come on, man, put me in it for a cameo, you know, for, for fun for the people who were fans of the original. He goes, we're going to New Zealand to shoot it. And there's really nothing in it that you could do. We can't bring any actors, you know, um, to New Zealand to do it. I'm, I'm excited to see if this will also bring a lot of people back to the original. And NP is now back in the Main Street Electrical Parade at Disney World. I gotta say, that movie was 
probably the highlight of my entire career. I was on it for six months, and just going to work every day, I just couldn't wait to go to work. It was so much fun. And the makeup artist was one of the original Mouseketeers, Tommy. And I'd walk in and I'd go to him, come on, man, say it. He said, I'm not saying it. I said, I'm not sitting in the makeup chair until you say it. And he would turn, o- turn over his shoulder and go, Tommy. You can't leave that out. What's that? Oh, I know. My daughter's going, you can't leave out. I was telling her about Shelly's bad behavior. You talked about her knee, her, you know, her, her ligament thing. There came, there was one shot where we needed the whole family up on this, like, tree. It, it never made it into the movie. And we were supposed to be kind of, we were backlit, and it was a silhouette. And we all looked like vultures at the end of the happiest home in the hill. You know, we'll bring you cake and gingerbread. So Shelly's sitting there in her wheelchair with her oxygen and everything. And she said to the director, I can't do it. My knee. I can't do it. Shoot it on Monday. This was like a, like a Friday. I can't, well, shoot it on Monday and I'll do it. He says, Shelly, darling, you don't have to. We've got your photo double all dressed up. Now, she had a photo double that looked just like her. When you put the wig and the dress and the makeup and the fake tooth, there's no way that you could tell that it wasn't Shelly Winters. And it was backlit. You really didn't even see her face. So we're sitting up there on the tree, all the family. And Shelly's way up in this tree, like a big branch, backlit. And we're literally, the camera's rolling. And Shelly says to the choreographer's assistant who was in back of the wheelchair, no one's paying any attention to me. And she gets up off the wheelchair with her cane that she used in the movie, and she starts whacking her stunt double going, get down, get down, you don't look anything like me, get down, I'll do it, I'll do it. And the director's going, Shelly, darling, you don't have to do it, you can't tell, it's, it's fine. It's just, you know, she's, no, no, I'll do it, it'll be okay. So they get her down, and the director, like, literally grabs her button, was pushing her up the tree so to help her get up there. So she gets up on the tree, and you have to have both legs, like, up, you know, like, so you could, like, lean on your knees. You know what I'm saying? Sitting, sitting down, but both, both legs were up on, like, a little kind of a box. And she's only got one leg up. And he says, Shelly, darling, you have to put the other leg up to match everybody else in the family. He goes, I can't. My knee. I can't. The director didn't say anything. He climbed up the tree, grabbed her leg, bent it, put it on a box, said, behave yourself, went down, and we shot it with Shelly. She slowly said, no one's paying any attention to me. (laughs) (laughs) You've done so much since then. I want to make sure you you mention what you're up to now. Oh, gosh. You know, I, I worked in a lot of movies since then, but... You know, it wasn't long after, like, Pete's Dragon, I did a bunch of other movies, that I kind of segged into the stunt department. Then I did the movie um, Back to the Future 2. I did all the hoverboard stunts, uh, chasing Biff. Like I said, I kind of segged into the stunt department and had a long career as a stuntman and stunt coordinator. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show, Gary. It it means a lot. And before we end the show, I have three Disney-themed questions I always ask my guests. I call them the Fab Three. So we'll start with the Donald one, which is, as a child, what Disney film was one of your favorites to see in the movie theater? I gotta say, I had such a crush on Haley Mills in Pollyanna. And now our goofy question. What Disney character do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? And we have to exclude Elliot the Dragon here. Well, you know, I do a great Donald Duck voice. And I actually auditioned because they just were recasting Donald. I was on a Donald. And our Mickey question. If I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what immediately comes to mind? When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who has that one. (laughs) Oh, I cannot thank you enough for coming on the show, Gary. And here's to another 40 years of Pete's Dragon. I love the film, and and thank you for always entertaining me all these years, and the listeners as well. Thank you so much, Dan. Like a bee. We're gonna spill them on his head. We're gonna fill them full of land. Eat them, eat them, eat them for dessert. Yeah.